So I do believe that you do have a home, and that home might have something to do with Ghana because you're Ghanaian, That's and good. the Ghanaians are going to have elections in the very near future. Are there any lessons to be learned from the Ghanaian experience, which seems to have a historical backdrop of violence itself, with people sort of being shot naked on sandy beaches, and now? What are we to learn from that experience in Kenya? I hope Ghana has learned from that experience. Uh, these things happened in the past, and for the past uh, decade or two, they've held peaceful elections and accepted that election is a normal way of democratic rotation of leadership. I hope the elections on Friday goes well. I did an uh, opinion piece for the graphic in Accra, urging them to respect the rules of the game, accept the results of the election, and stay away from any whiff of violence. And I hope uh, it goes that way. And in fact, recently, I chaired a global commission on integrity of elections, security, and democracy, identifying some of the weaknesses in the electoral system globally, and the importance of elections with integrity which confers legitimacy on the winner, but also protects the interest of the loser. And this is something we need to understand on my continent, on your continent, on our continent. Perhaps I'd ask on this continent in your experience, your, your backing down from Syria, is there, and to reading interventions, this whole idea of having been in the United States and spent your childhood in the civil rights sort of thing, has the, have you been conscious of responses to you as an African? Has race played uh, an influence in the way people have responded to you? Or once one wins a Nobel Prize, um, all doors are open and all respect is given? I had a long life before I won the Nobel Prize. Right. But let me say that on the whole, uh, people have been correct. They've been uh, fair. I will not say that I have not run into racial uh, issues particularly earlier in my career and, and life, but uh, it has not been an issue. And uh, when I have a job to do, I focus on what needs to be done and argue and reason simply and sincerely with those across the table from me and try and move them to where I think they ought to be. So maybe I've been lucky or I've been able to manage the relationships, but I have not allowed race to be an issue in my dealings around the world. One last question, sir. Time is of the essence. I, again, reading this book, this idea of poverty mm -hmm. being at the source of all tensions on the African continent, and your interest now in agriculture and the idea that the continent should feed itself. Should we go away from politics and talk about sustaining our development on the world? Well, uh, 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 absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, we are a young continent. This is the youngest continent in the world today. We have lots of young people who are unemployed in my country, in your country, and in other countries. We need to think about them. We need to think of the future. Lots of African countries are making lots of money from mining, from gold, uh, diamonds, from oil, from gas. That, those revenues should be transformed into services for the people and should be used to look after the welfare of the people. Take agriculture. We have perhaps uh, the largest track of cultivable land, agricultural land in the world today. 60% of the uncultivated land is in Africa. If we can improve our agricultural processes and help our small scale farmers, we can do a lot. The organization I chair, uh, Agra Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, which is headquartered here in Nairobi, we are doing whatever we can to help the small-scale farmers by making sure they get the rice seeds, teaching them how to handle fertilizer in micro-dosing and not flooding the land with their fertilizers, working with them to gain access to finance and marketing, trying to move them from subsistence to small businesses where they can feed their family and sell the surplus. And honestly, if we handle agriculture properly, Africa can become an essential part of the global food security system. We can export, we use export food to the rest of the world. And we should get away 
from producing what we do not eat and importing at exorbitant prices what we eat. It doesn't make sense. And agriculture can also create loss of employment for the young people who are unemployed. And I would hope that if we were to make life meaningful and livable and more comfortable in the rural areas, not everybody would want to rush to our cities and end up in slums. And so let's give agriculture a chance. Let's invest in agriculture. Let's support the women. Most of our farmers are women who are feeding us and putting food on the table. Today they are doing it alone, without support from governments, without access to money or management. We owe them that support. And if we use that army of farmers, women farmers, Africa would do extremely well. Coffee and thank you very much. Thank you.